Welcome to this week's video. Uh, we're going to be doing an unboxing. We got the shipment in from Roadie Fabrication. If you'd like to support the channel, please click the link in the description box below for my uh, PayPal account. And you can give a donation or not. It doesn't matter. It's all up to you. So, uh, people may first ask me, am I getting any kind of a discount from Roadie Fabrication for giving my shout out? No, I'm not. I'm doing this of my own free will because our community needs to grow. Us as many truckers need to support other many truckers. Am I asking for a handout from him? No, not at all. So let's get to the video now. All right, <clears throat> good weekend. Let's see what we're working with here. I found out that it's roadie fabrication, not roads. Roadie fabrication, R O H D E, road, roadie, yeah. We're just gonna go ahead and open this up. Let's see what we got in here. Looks like he makes these on site. And you get a whole set of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you get a total of 16, like I said. That's what you need. Let's go ahead and get all this stuff put off to the side. See what we got here. Now, not everybody tumbles. He's probably got this stock laying around because they make them. Looks like they go ahead and wire brush them. Everything looks cut nicely. I mean, it's most of this is not rounded off like you normally would expect. But for the price, this was $50. I mean, you, uh, you get something for $50... And you can't expect absolute perfection, but you can expect something you can use. I ordered the uh, 9 16 bolt. Hopefully this works. Oh, look at there. That's good. So the bolt works. These two on the rear and these go on the axle for a three axle, which is the biggest part of my axle. If these mount a little farther out, that's fine. We can just trim this off a little bit and make it a little bit tighter. And it'll still go on there and hold where we want it to. These are 3 sixteenths. They're not quite quarter. Let's see. I think I got some quarter right here. These are the shock tabs. So see how they're just, it's just a little bit smaller. But for a mini truck, this is fine. It's going to hold up to whatever you got going on. Thanks for the support. Look forward to more videos. Rody Fab. Rody Fab. There it is. Pause it. Write that information down. Next order of business is putting our link bars, getting them ready. Bushings. Hardware. All right, right here. This is how easy this is. You've, if you've done suspensions before any type of suspension and you've changed up your bushings this is how easy it is to put together then you're going to take this some people would suggest putting silicone grease in this which we probably need to but for now we're going to show how this is done and we can put that in later there put it in there so it's flat and then you throw your bolt through there that's just to get these ready all right, so I'm back over here at Preferred Steel, and this is, you can pause that right now so you can check out the information on that. These are some of the products that they have on all different lengths. They sell uh, generally most everything at 25 cents a pound, so whatever you need, you can come over here and pick this up. All right, so what did we get? We got some 2-inch by half or almost half steel and what this is going to be used for is to reinforce the rib on the back side of the lower link bars yeah freaks baby 
But all of this stuff that I just mentioned, all this stuff out here, you can actually come out here and look at it. It's all sitting out. And then they also have uh, shorter cut pieces inside. All right, now for the next step. Got to get in here, the storage, and uh, got to find a few more things. I trying to remember what the hell you ever get somewhere and you're like, um, what was I supposed to get? <clears throat> I have no idea. Look, still got them rims. Oh, <laughs> all right. Thought I was gonna go outside. Anyway, I've got <clears throat> a couple valve setups already, but I had one that I still needed to put together. So I went ahead and went and got some fittings. I gotta order some more fittings. Uh, I went to uh, Napa. Napa sells the all brass fittings. I probably could have gotten these cheaper through uh, Jason Thorbeck, thorbros.com. This is gonna go right over here. As long as it's the same thread count, yep. All right, I still use this Teflon tape, a lot of guys vote against it. I don't have a problem with it. I cranked everything down and I don't ever have any major leaks. All right, bam, movie magic. It's already together. <laughs> so uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that these arrows are all going the same way. You look at the bottom of your uh, valves here and you'll have an arrow pointing one direction. That's the direction that the air flows. So you want this all to go the same way. This is the center part is where your uh, airbag is. This is going to go straight to your airbag. So you're going to have a fitting on the end here that will connect. So you'll have, for, for this setup, we're doing one for the rear and two for the front. We do two on the front because they're more independent. And you can adjust uh, how level you are with the front end. The rear end, it'll all air up together because we don't plan on going down the road and doing all kinds of stuff like that. <laughs> all right, let's go out. What the hell happened here? Okay, so a little bit of movie magic. I had to take the actual part, so I took the brake lines off. I've got a brake bleeder so I can re-bleed all the brakes. Some of you might not have that opportunity, so you'll have to actually pump the brakes and bleed them all back through. Taking these apart, the drum brakes are just freaking nasty. Brake slave cylinders, is that what these would be called? Yeah, these have to be rebuilt because on one of them, they're leaking right there. Eventually that's gonna blow out. They do make rebuild kits for these and it's very simple to rebuild those. Not a problem. I'm not gonna explain how I took the drum brakes apart because if you've never dealt with drum brakes, you might not want to start, but <laughs> do a lot of research on these because they are a pain in the ass. The devil created them, just so you guys know. The other side is exactly the same. It is just a pile of crap in there, and they need to be redone. So if we end up running into somebody in Maggie Valley, sorry. <laughs> just playing. They'll be able to stop because you stop with the front brakes, not the back brakes, right? Who needs back brakes? I did notice one thing about the way the uh, gas tank was raised. The gas tank was raised, but it should have been pinched in as far to the right as possible because with it where it is, when the axle comes all the way up, it's gonna rub this outside edge of the gas tank. So I'm gonna have to try to relocate it as far this way as possible. I don't wanna have to cut this lip off because that lip is the seal that goes around. And if you bend it or break, if you bend it or cut it, you run the risk of having a gas leak on this side. Okay, a lot of you asked, am, am I gonna have to do something with a cross member that's underneath the cab? With a uh, single cab, yes, you have to trim that and bring it up. I remember having to do that with my single cab Toyota. With a double cab, it comes with a carrier bearing. The carrier bearing is right there at the rear. Cross member. This drive shaft can come all the way up to here <laughs> your 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 drive shaft will not have to come up this high okay so see it has full range of motion we're not going to have to deal with moving anything underneath the cab now all of you want to go out and get an extended cab or a king cab i know cab plus i know because that carrier bearing means everything my mazda was the same way the carrier bearing was at the rear 
and you didn't have to do nothing to that cross member in the back I think you had to do something to the back of the cab is all I had to do on the Mazda the Mazda at the back of the cab right there it comes down a little further right here and so all I did was I put something I took the drive shaft out and I put something underneath the cab and I just kept smashing the shit out of the cab until it cleared I need to clean this up <coughs> right now it's upside down so I need to clean the leaf spring mount off get that cleaned off uh, the that holds the uh, the brake line it it's on that so I'm gonna have to cut that off and then it'll end up getting re-welded to the axle itself it is 1 30 I gotta be done no later than 2 o'clock so I can get cleaned up and dressed this little girl is going to her first school dance where I don't get to dance with her I don't get to go out there this time it's not a father-daughter dance it's a daughter dance without guys Not all without guys? Wait, 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 what? What? I don't have a guy, but you are allowed to dance with a guy. Oh, you think you're going to dance with a guy? And not unless they ask me. What about you asking them? Probably not. You can ask a guy to dance. You said no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, if you want to drag one out there and make him feel entirely uncomfortable, I'll, I'm, I'm totally for it. Okay. <laughs> I'll make sure I do it. Okay. <laughs> First, I just need to make sure I don't get extremely mad at my nose. Okay. What are you doing? I'm trying to pick my nose. Let me see. They look horrible. Well, you're learning still, baby. That's another reason I need to uh, get done with all this over here so that I can help you with your nails, right? Yeah. All right. Next thing you want to know you want to make sure of is where the center of your axle is because once you take this off you're going to want to be able to center this back on here you can use your leaf ring hangers do not take these off because from the center point of where that leaf spring mount is to the center point of that hole right there is centered from there straight back and same thing with that one from there straight back would be centered now so what I'm gonna do is, is I'm measuring from this center of this hole to center of this hole up and over okay with that being in mind it's not a straight line it goes up and then down so from that point it is what the hell was it <laughs> I can't remember uh, 39 and 3 quarters right yeah I think so okay 39 and 3 quarters from this point to this point and then uh, I divided it by two and if that measurement I said was right at first divided it by two was 19 and 8 tenths so 19 and 8 tenths from that point is centered right there so from that point over to here is 19 and 8 tenths we want to remember that number so when we set it back up we can square it up using those measurements okay that way we can make sure that it's center. Now I did do a drop mark. This is right here is where center is on the notch. I did the same thing on the other side. That way we know exactly where center is on the notch. Now here's the other thing. A lot of people are worried about pinion angle, pinion angle, pinion angle. Okay, this is upside down right now, but this is your pinion, okay? It doesn't matter where your transmission is as adjacent to this this is your pinion okay your pinion needs to be level everybody says well, what do you set your pinion at everybody's going to tell you negative one degree to positive one degree that's from center up one degree or down one degree that's it that's all you got to remember is this is going to be straight when you set it when you put it at your ride height you set your pinion angle at as level as possible that way it can work the way it's supposed to inside there. That's it, that's, that's all you gotta remember. You know, so when you get your truck set, and let's say you're gonna ride with the rear end down, and the front end is gonna be way up in the air, your truck's gonna ride like this, okay? Your pinion is gonna ride like that. 
that's where you get the difference of between your truck and your rear axle. Your truck's going to be riding Cali. Your axle's going to be level. All right, first things first, you guys are going to be a part of this too. Look, I did her nails because she was having a little bit of trouble with them. <laughs> All right, we got to go get your hair done. You ready? Yeah. Not every day you see one of those. Oh my God, I love those. Okay, we got to hurry up. She's almost ready. <laughs> Let me see. I did a right shadow. <laughs> and my nails. And, and my toenails. And your toenails. Ta da! <laughs> oh, and my hair's done. Yes. It's so cute. All right, we gotta head there now. That's how that's gonna keep going. I'm gonna get the rest of this cut off. I'll be right back. Poor thing. Gotta lay it to rest. It's dead. Dead. <laughs> it, well, it cannot mini truck on. <laughs> Poor thing. It's like, eh, 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 eh. Oh well, that's it. I'll throw it away. Time for a little flyover. All right, I got that done. And that side's grinded off too, so that's all cut off. Even though I ran out of grinder, well, this one still works, but it doesn't have a guard. And the only thing I like using on it is the uh, grinding wheel, not the cutoff wheels. The cutoff wheels, they break too easy and can pop, and that just makes me uncomfortable. Didn't used to, huh? I know some of you are like, I remember when you didn't care. Uh, I ended up using the uh, Sawzall. That actually worked out really good for actually being able to cut off even more than what I would normally be able to do with the other. So if you have a Sawzall, which you can get a Sawzall, it doesn't have to be a battery powered one. You can get one at like pawn shops for uh, 20, 30 bucks that are still good. You can even find DeWalt ones. You can find uh, off brand ones that plug into the wall and they work absolutely great. That's what I'm looking at right there. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over now so that we can get it set back up into place and we can start making measurements. I believe my link bars are a little bit too long so I may have to cut them down and uh, we'll see how that goes. Well, rain delay. Just started coming down. I got the... Uh, upper link bars uh, remeasured and basically cut I need to do a little bit here let me let's go in the shop <coughs> all right here we are um, let's see I cut these off and then I've got this left now what I'll do is i am grind this all down and get this back smooth and then once I get that smooth what I'll do is I'll turn it this way and I'll use this side to re-weld since this side's already been welded into, it, something tells me I just need to use the other side. Now, if I'm wrong, then please let me know, but I'm thinking I need to go ahead and weld this side rather than this side, because this side's already been compromised. That's just my thinking. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to get that done today. <sighs> we'll see what happens. Alright, I was able to get these welded back on. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and put the bushings back in these. These are done. These might still be too long. I, we got to check them out, but because of the rain. <sighs> what are you doing? What? Come here. What? Hold on. Oh yeah, we moved this. No, I fixed it by myself. <laughs> by yourself? <laughs> what we did was we took her stage or whatever it was over there and we went ahead and added it back because these are the original two pieces that go here. So now we can go ahead and we can put a chair out here, a couple chairs, maybe a table. Uh, when we put this out here, we can put it over here. And it just gives us a little bit more workspace. I would love to put an awning from here coming straight out. If I can ever get that done, that would really help with being able to work outside more. So, I don't know if I'm working tomorrow. Big truck is in the shop. So, there's a chance that I'll be home all day tomorrow. My wife's home tomorrow. So, me and her will be able to get uh, spend the day together and be able to get some stuff done while little booger butt is at school. <laughs> I'm not a booger butt. She's not a booger butt. So, we're going to get that done. Uh, this is it. So, thank you for watching. Uh, look forward to the uh, midweek video. We'll prob we might have some more build on the, on, on the midweek video. So, stay tuned for that uh, going up probably Wednesday night. And uh, we will see you guys on the next video. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And... Uh, yeah, that's it. Talk to you guys later. Comment. Thumbs up. Later, guys.